Hello everyone, welcome to my bold and beautiful now channel. As always, this time I have appeared with the mysterious soap opera, so don't delay like and subscribe now, and stay tuned. At the cliff house, Steffi and Finn made out until they were interrupted by a disturbing call from Lee, announcing that Hollis from Il Giardino had died. Finn put the phone on speaker, Lee still didn't know the cause of death, but the hospital was running tests. Finn decided to meet his mom in the morgue, and as he prepared to go, Steffi freaked out, noting that it had happened at Il Giardino. She said it was rare for a young man to die unexpectedly. Finn promised to keep her posted, and he took off. Later, Finn and Lay gazed at Hollis, covered to his shoulders on a steel table. Lee said it was hard when one knew the deceased. Finn said that Hollis had been active with no known medical conditions. Finn told Hollis that he'd been cheated, his life cut way too short. Lee told Hollis that she was sorry it had happened to him, and she covered his face with the sheet. In Eric's office, Brooke and Ridge made out, and he was glad to have her in the office. She said they should collaborate more on this special project. Hope arrived, and apologizing for interrupting, she announced that Hollis from Il Giardino had died. Brooke and Rich were horrified by the news. Hope didn't know much more and hadn't wanted to bombard Deacon with questions. Brooke was amazed by how quickly things could change. She was glad she'd gotten to know Hollis on their little date. Rich replied that it had been one dinner, but he was sure she'd made an impression. Brooke recalled that Hollis had been sweet and hadn't deserved to die. Hope believed that Hollis had had a positive influence on Deacon and had grounded him. Brooke thought Deacon had been lucky to have him. Ridge wished they'd talk about the elephant in the room, that two people had died within a few weeks at Il Giardino. Steffi arrived and assumed they'd been talking about Hollis. She declared that there was no way the two deaths could be a coincidence. Steffi assumed Hope had information because it was her dad's place of business. Hope said she didn't know if anyone else had been hurt. None of them knew how it could happen but Steffi had suspicions. Multiple deaths at Il Giardino. Only one person comes to mind. Shyla, Steffi concluded. At Il Giardino, Deacon and Shyla were devastated by Hollis' death. Sorry she'd had to find the body like that. Deacon noted that Hollis and Thomas were both gone. Hollis had helped Deacon build his business, and Deacon couldn't imagine running the place without Hollis, the hardest working and most loyal employee. Deacon asked what the hell had happened. Shida tried to comfort Deacon. He wondered what he'd missed. She told him that it wasn't his fault. But Deacon asserted that he was the boss. He wanted to be someone his employees could go to. He remarked that Hollis, not a partier, had eaten clean and worked out. Deacon asked if Shida had noticed anything. She said it was a mystery. Deacon wondered who could be next. Shida could see it weighing on Deacon. He said Hollis had been like a brother and had made the place feel like a home. He'd charmed the ladies and made strangers feel welcome to return. Shida remarked that Hollis had loved working with Deacon. Deacon felt responsible and said there could have been signs. Shida replied that there was no telling what went on with people behind closed doors. Deacon insisted that Hollis had been bright and happy around there. Tom had been a sweet guy. He'd been turning his life around. Deacon felt as if he'd been clueless. Shyla told Deacon that he couldn't change the course of destiny for anyone. Deacon stated that he hadn't had many friends, but Tom and Hollis had been his friends. At Bill's Shyla house, comforted Bill Deacon. was glad to get some time with Poppy. They'd missed each other over the weekend, and she'd gotten in late the other night. He figured she'd tell him if something was going on. Wouldn't you? Bill asked. To him, she seemed stressed out or troubled. Poppy hadn't realized she was acting that way. Bill hoped she had no doubts about them, and he promised to always take care of her and Luna. Luna arrived, upset that her friend Hollis was gone, and she'd never see him again. She'd just been laughing and joking with him the other night, and he'd had his whole life ahead of him. The shot Poppy and Bill said they were there for her. Bill wondered if they should stay away from Il Giardino for a while due to the restaurant's run of bad luck. Later, 
Poppy scrolled through her phone, saying Lee was overseeing the post-mortem exam. Luna got upset to think of Hollis that way. Poppy said she was sorry, but Lee had texted Poppy, who'd thought it would comfort Luna that Lee and Finn were with Hollis. Luna cried that it wasn't normal that so many people were dying at the same place. Bill tried to give it some perspective. Though the losses were tragic, he figured they could honour them by being grateful for what they had adding that it was important that they counted their blessings. Poppy declared that her biggest blessing was Bill. She adored her life with him. She said it had been a dream come true. Bill replied that it had been for him too. Poppy hugged Bill and decided that she had to run. There was somewhere she needed to be. After Poppy had gone, Bill continued to support Luna, telling her that they'd get through it together. He asked if Luna knew where Poppy had run off to, but Luna shook her head. Back in the morgue, Lee and Finn went over Hollis' report. Besides minor contusions probably caused by Hollis collapsing, nothing stood out in the report. Finn figured that the awaited toxicology report would tell them more. Lee's phone kept chiming as they talked. Finn wondered if she'd respond to it. She said it was just his father, who kept texting and calling her. Finn wondered what Jack wanted, but before Lee could say more, a nurse arrived with the toxicology report. Lee was stunned by what she read in the report. She handed Finn the folder, and he seemed taken aback by what he read. Poppy arrived, and Lee asked what her sister was doing there. I said I'd text, Lee said. Poppy replied that Luna was upset about Hollis, so Poppy thought she'd get Luna some answers. Poppy asked if they knew how Hollis had died. Lee replied that it hadn't been natural causes. Hollis was drugged, Poppy. Drugged. And I know exactly who did it. Lee claimed.